starting from scratch with zero background and want to become a software engineer without enrolling into a computer science degree or a bootcamp? As a software engineer who worked with many people who made that transition without having any background, this is exactly what you need to do. Step one, pick up Python. Go on YouTube and look for Corey Schaefer's Python tutorial that will teach you what you need to know starting from zero. Set up your development environment and start writing basic code. Don't try to learn all the features or overwhelm yourself with everything you can do with Python. You will learn as you go, but make sure you're comfortable reading basic Python code. And to get there, make sure to use Google and ChatGPT to explain the code to you when you get stuck. As a habit, spend some time to tinker with parts of the code that confused you to improve your understanding. You're going to get super confused and get stuck, but get used to asking ChatGPT every question you will have and you will slowly start getting it. Step two, look for companies hiring for associate software engineers. Those are junior friendly roles that not only pay well, but also take into account that you don't have technical background and that you're transitioning into software engineering from something different. As an associate, you will get more attention and mentoring and it will allow you to learn the craft of a software engineer more gradually while you get paid as one and build actual software instead of continuing working on cookie cutter projects at home on your own. Go to LinkedIn, Indeed, look up lists of companies hiring for associate roles and do your research to slowly build a list of all such companies. Step three, time to become hireable. As you start gaining some familiarity with Python, look up some videos on projects and follow them to put something you can talk about on your resume. There are many to choose from. Go with what seems interesting to you, but also something that you know you can write about in at least two bullet points where you describe the project and something technical about it, like how it implements an API, for example, and how it successfully does something. Also, make sure to change or add something on your own so that if and when you're asked on your projects, you can say that you've started with a tutorial and then continued on your own adding a feature. Put three to four projects on your resume and describe them concisely. If you have an idea for a project of your own that you want to build with Python, then this is the time. But make sure to time block it and dedicate time to following the other steps as well. Step four, connect. While you slowly get familiar with coding and as you search for companies, dedicate one hour every day for connecting with engineers who work at those companies. Reach out to them and in a sentence, describe yourself and ask them for a quick 15 minute chat. If they don't answer, it's because they are busy and they forget. So just follow up once a week. After chatting with them and learning about them, ask them to run your resume through one of the recruiters for the associate role you're interested in. After they do that, the recruiter will put you in the interviewing pipeline or set up a call with you so long that it's for an associate role which would not ask for years of experience. But if you don't hear back, follow up. Reach out a lot. This is purely a numbers game. The more you do this, the more you guarantee crossing the first barrier and start getting interviews. Step five, prepare. As the interviews come in, you need to dedicate time for preparation. But for you, it's going to be a little different, which I will get to in a moment. Usually the first round is a call with a recruiter. There will be no test there. It's just to confirm that you're interested in the role. So showing some excitement is more than enough. For any technical round, be prepared to do some lead code questions. Now relax, focus your preparation on the easy level questions. Take time each day to get familiar with each topic and solve the questions on the easy level. From my experience for these associate roles, you're not going to need to speed out the solution to a medium question in 20 minutes. You're not interviewing for Fang or Mang or whatever. This is where it's different. Later on, when you also gain some experience, you can continue preparing and you will crack those interviews as well. But for now, focus on easy level questions in addition to reading an article explaining the core concepts of computer science and operating systems like what is the difference between a thread and a process. Once you get into an interview loop, it is in your recruiter's interest for you to pass the interview even if you don't end up taking the offer because usually they get a bonus regardless. So before any interview, ask your recruiter to give you an idea of what the interview will be about. If they mention an algorithmic question, you know it's lead code. If they mention computer science or programming fundamentals, you know it's going to relate to common OS concepts, which you will quickly grasp after watching a video or two or reading an article. 
Those will be conversational and won't require a lot of time for you to prepare. These are likely the only types of interviews you will have and they will be relatively light, so don't stress out. The only other interviews you might have are a discussion with the hiring manager or a product manager. If you have those, they're most certainly going to be behavioral. So just make sure you learn a bit about the company, what they do and listen during the interview. Either way, make sure you clarify that with your recruiter. Step 5.5 polish a week before your interview you want to do some mock interviews practice your introductions and the act of interviewing itself even if you know the answer by heart you are expected to follow a general structure of the interview and you will most likely not pass the interview if after being given the question you quickly write or type out the answer go through the stages of interviewing and don't rush I've been asked questions in the past that I knew the answer for, but because I rushed, I ended up confusing myself and not passing the interview, even though it should have been an easy one. Step six, you fail, struggle, and then eventually you land an offer. This is big, celebrate. Getting the first software engineer job is always the hardest one, and it's more than worth it thanks to the high demand and compensation. But you're not done. Step seven, after accepting the offer, ask for a quick call with your soon-to-be manager, which they will be happy to accept. Get to know them and the work that the team is doing. In addition, especially since this is the first time you're going to work as a software engineer, ask for what the tech stack looks like so that you can get some early practice and have a smoother start. Don't overthink this or try to go all in on everything your manager mentions. Simply scratch the surface and just gain some basic familiarity. As a bonus, while these steps will get you going as quickly as possible, you want to keep in mind the bigger picture as well. If you want to perform better as an engineer and grow your expertise over time, make sure to catch up on the fundamentals that will help you get there, specifically completed data structures course and an introduction to an operating systems course. While computer science is a theoretical degree that prepares the students to do research in the field, these two courses are important for learning the first principles of building software as a software engineer. You got this. I'm going to work from a coffee shop and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.